Stadium Scarf by Share Our World. Today we are making a stadium scarf, which is a scarf that has pockets on the front for your hands and a, po a zipper pocket on the back on one side and a cell phone pocket on the back on the other side. And what we're going to need for this is a half a yard, a yard of fleece and a third of a yard of contrasting fleece. If you are buying a piece of fleece, you're going to want a yard of fleece. Now, fleece has two directions. It has a very stretchy direction and it has a less stretchy direction. We are going to cut the length of this scarf the less stretchy the direction and the width of the scarf is going to be the stretchier direction. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our ruler and we are going to measure, let's see if we can see this ruler. We are going to measure a width that is 14 inches. Let me put a piece of tape there so you can see my 14 inch width. Here is where my 14 inch line is right here, right there, see that? And when I measure, a lot of times I will put tape on my on what I'm measuring with. Now I'm going to use Sharpie, it doesn't really matter what you use, but typically on fleece I do use Sharpie, um, just because I can see it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, a line at 14 inches, and this will be the full yard of your fleece. Just like this. And as you can see, I've got my yard cut in half. Oh, it's folded in half, not cut in half. My yard is folded in half. Now I am going to draw a line straight down this. I want you to notice that my yard of fleece is folded carefully in half. And after I've got my line drawn, I'm going to take my fabric shears and I'm going to cut along that line. And as, and as I cut along this line, I'm going to take in both layers of this fleece. Just, if you have a rotary cutter, you can do this with a rotary cutter. It doesn't really matter much. Um, because I, if as long as I've drawn this line, I get a really good cut. Um, Then I'm going to do this a second time. I'm going to set this one aside. The first thing I actually did was take the selvage off. And I did it the same way as I did this. I measured over one inch from the edge and I drew a line and I just cut along that line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my pockets. And the way I'm going to make my pockets is first, I'm going to take that fleece selvage off. And again, I'm working with this length is not as stretchy as this length. It doesn't really matter how much of a selvage I take off. I could take off a full two inches, which is how wide my ruler is. But I'm just going to take off one inch and I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw along the second edge of my ruler just like this. Again, I use Sharpie, keeping in mind that all of this is going to be sewn into a seam. Then I take this off. If I were using a rotary cutter, I would just have cut right along the edge of that ruler. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my piece of fabric right on the, my body fabric right onto the piece of fabric that I just cut. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to cut. And I'm going to just draw a line along the edge of that piece of fabric. Again, as you can see, my fabric isn't super straight at the edge, but that will be taken care of because all that part is the fringe. So that will be taken care of at the end and you really won't notice. Now I have a single, I have one pocket cut and I'm going to take my pins or my quilt clips. A lot of times I'll use quilt clips on fleece, but I'm going to take my pin 
and I'm just going to put a couple of pins along the edge of this. The next bit of marking I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little piece of tape off and I'm going to put my tape on at three inches. And I'm going to just measure three inches up and I will use a wash a marker that washes out for this. Um, you certainly don't have to uh, because this will be on the inside of the finished product. So you don't really have to, but I particularly like to. And I'm going to make a straight line at three inches. And as you can see, I'm just working with half of this scarf. We will sew this scarf together at the in the middle after we've put the pockets on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this, I'm just going to fold this over quickly, just like this, because I want to see the center of my scarf. This will be sewn shut. And because I'm going to put pockets on one end, I really want to see where the center of my scarf is. So I've just marked this in the two places that make the center of my scarf. When I open this back up, you will see that I have a mark here and a mark here. At that point, I also am going to be using fabric marker, the washoutable fabric marker, just for ease of, for ease. And that will be the center of my pocket. This pocket is going to have a six inch zipper on this side that will go on just like that. And I am not going to do anything fancy with this zipper. I am just going to sew along this edge and along this edge. This edge will be sewn only to the pocket. This edge will be sewn only to the, to the scarf area. That will give me a zipper pocket to put money and such in. And the three inch line we've made on this side will be the bottom of the pocket. And this, the center side seam will also will be the center of, will enclose this pocket. This front pocket we're leaving open. It should fit my hand nicely to keep my hand warm while I'm sitting at a, while I'm sitting in a game or something. This top edge here, we're not really going to deal with it because fleece is stable. If you don't like the look of a raw edge, you can always turn it under just like this and sew it along prior to putting the zipper on it, just like that. But I am not going to do that. You can also put a fun piece of fluffy fleece on it to, or a piece of bias tape to give it some interest. But again, we're not going to do that for this particular one. We're just going to leave it plain and raw. It is not going to hurt it any at all. I will be making a second video modifying this. So I would, if you want to see a little bit fancier work done here, watch my next video. So I have one done. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing to my next one. I lay out my pocket fabric. I lay my body fabric on the top of it. So it's lined up at the edge. Then I take my ruler and I draw a line down that edge. I'm going to cut that line out. Using my shears. Then I'm going to pin a couple of places here. just to keep them nicely together. Then like the last one, I'm going to make a three inch, a three inch line with my fabric marker.
just like that. And then I'm going to draw across with my fabric marker just like this. And again, I am going to fold this in half carefully and I'm going to mark where it folds right at the edge of that fold. And when I open that back up, you will see that I have these two marks right in the center and I'm going to draw that line as well. This edge will be where you put your cell phone. If you wanted to fit your cell phone a little bit closer, what you need to do is lay your cell phone on this, kind of in the center, and, inst and, I'm going, and I'm not going to draw exactly precisely around it. I'm going to give myself a half inch on both, on all, about three quarters of an inch actually, on all edges just like that. So when I sew this, when I sew this, I will literally sew just around where I just marked this. The first thing we're going to sew, so I have my lines that I've drawn. I also have my line on the back. The first thing we're going to sew is the line on the back. Um, the reason why we're sewing this line on the back is because our pocket needs a bottom. If I were, if I, we're just making a pocket without, if I were just making a pocket without a, without a zipper on it, without a zipper or cell phone in it, I would not, probably not sew this bottom line. In fact, I might do the, 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 the fringe, which we're going to do. I might do this fringe the way you do a fleece blanket. But since I am making a, since I'm making pockets, I would, I want it to be sewn across. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start where I sewed that first line because the rest of this is fringe. I don't, I don't need to sew anywhere where the fringe is going to be. And I like to give my, my line, I got, like to give the top and bottom of my pockets a good back and forth. So now I have a pocket a pocket sewn along the, the center line and the last pocket I'm going to sew because this is my cell phone pocket. I'm going to just sew right along where I had I traced my cell phone. And this isn't a super, when I get to the bottom, I'm going to leave my needle down or I'm going to put my needle down if my needle doesn't end up down. And I'm going to come along and leave my needle down again. And just come up along here all the way to the edge. That is the end of that pocket. Now I have all of the pockets sewn on this side. I have my pocket for my hand and I have my pocket for my cell phone. To give us this lightning a different perspective, we're going to do this with my sewing machine camera that I just got. First thing we're going to do is we're going to sew this three inch line that we drew and back stitch at the end. Then we're going to do the zipper. And again, we are going to check which side the zipper is going on by matching it with my my pocket from the other side. So as you can see, here's the pocket from the other side. There you can see. Here's the pocket from the other side. And so this is the side I want my zipper on. Right here, I am going to take off, take out this pin. And I'm going to fold this forward. And I am going to lay my zipper right along this edge. Now, let's see if you can see that. See, I laid my zipper right along this edge. I'm going to pin it on, just like this, and I'm going to pin it all the way along, just like this. I will show you the back in just a second. 
And you notice I've got a big chunky zipper. That's what I would recommend for this, just because big chunky zippers typically don't don't get don't get caught in fleece quite as much as as other zippers. Now I've pinned it on. I will show you the back of this just to give you an idea of what we did. You see, I pinned it right next to the teeth. Then I actually take this down just a little bit farther from the teeth, just like that. So I'm just a little bit farther from that zipper to those zipper teeth on this end. And I have unpinned this all the way from the scarf. I've unpinned it from the scarf so I can work with the zipper. But my the bottom part of my scarf has been sewn on. But I just want to be able to work with my zipper independent of my scarf. I'm going to back stitch at the end of my zipper. And then I'm going to carefully sew all the way along that zipper. Just attaching it to the end. And as I come up to the pins, I take them out. Now my slip is in the way, as you can see. So I'm just going to zip that back. And if you are having trouble zipping it back, just put your presser foot up and you will be able to do that. We were sewing pretty far away from our zipper teeth. I'm going to back stitch that off there in the middle. And I'm going to sew this on one more time, a little bit closer to the teeth. As you can see, to get my zipper back, I put my presser foot up. Then I'm just wiggling that guy so it's all the way back. Putting my presser foot back down, and I'm going to sew. I'm going to sew the rest of the way to the end of the back stitch. So now I have a zipper that's sewn on. Now the next thing I'm going to do is zip this up. And I'm going to sew this zipper onto my onto my scarf on the other side right here. So I've sewn it onto the pocket. Now I'm going to sew it onto the scarf. And I'm going to do this the same way I did it before. I'm going to lay this here. And I'm just going to sew right along there, right along kind of the edge. And you notice I didn't actually need to need to uh, pin this one because I it's just laying flat on the pee, the it's just laying flat on the scarf. And I'm going to sew it one more time. You don't actually have to do the double sew. I just like it to be a little bit more stable. And I don't have a very wide foot. And you, if you have a, so I don't have a zipper foot for this machine. If you have a zipper foot for your machine, it's nice to put that zipper foot on there. And I'm back stitching. Now I have a zipper that is attached here. And I would use thread that is the same color as my zipper. I didn't, so you could see it. You can see where I went right off the edge of the zipper. That was very attractive. Now I have my zipper sewn on here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew starting my, at my three inch line and I am going to sew, give myself a good back stitch at the end. I'm going to sew all the way up to the top and at this point I am sewing across the zipper. As you can see, I'm sewing across that zipper. And backing up all the way to the end. Now I have a zipper pocket and I have another hand pocket, just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two ends and I'm going to put them right sides together. That means the pockets are facing each other. And I'm going to do a quick um, clip with my clips, just like that, all the way along here. And I've lined my two pieces up, just like that. You see they're lined up nice and stable. And this I'm going to sew 
at my half inch mark. Um, you could do it a little bit less wide, but I want it nice and wide just to give me a good solid seam that I don't have to worry about coming out. Last but not least, I am going to fold this over the other direction, right sides together. Now, I have a very thick end right here. You can see that my end is pretty thick. So, it, and I'm just going to clip it with my crow clips. And your sewing machine, because fleece isn't very dense, your sewing machine should just go right through this. I, I wouldn't sew super fast through this, but your sewing machine shouldn't have any problems at all with it. But I'm going to come up and I'm going to match my, match my, the, my center seam. Put a quilt clip there and I am going to open up my center seam. And I want you to observe that I'm just going to trim the part that's not quite even. You see, I, because I, I remember I showed you that my one edge wasn't quite as wide as my other edge. But I'm just going to trim that so it's more or less even. Because I'm using a piece of scrap felt, a uh, scrap fleece. Now I am going to clip a few places down this scarf. I don't have to clip a lot of places. I just need it lined up. The most important thing to line up is my edges of my pocket and my center seam. The rest of this kind of just falls into place. After I've put all of my, my quilt clips on this, I'm going to take my pins out. I don't really need those and I don't need my sewing machine to try to figure out where they are. I mean, to hit them. So I'm just going to take those out. And on the pocket, I try to line it up pretty carefully so that all four seams, do you see how all four seams are pretty well lined up? And then I'm going to clip this just like this with my quilt clip, taking that last pin out. Then I'm going to line these up really good, just like that. And I already have the center done right here. So the next, so I'm just going to come down with this and clip it a couple times, just making sure I have it lined up. I'm not starting at the end. At the end, that's where my, that's where my fringe is going to be. I'm going to start right where my seam is. Do you see where my seam is? And I'm coming up, that's where I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to backstitch right here a few times, just because I like that. And you can tell my sewing machine is sewing through a thicker because you can hear it. A slightly thicker fabric in your sewing machine should be able to do this. You don't need an industrial machine to sew four layers of things. And I'm going to make sure, as I come here, I'm making sure that every part of this is lined up. And I'm keeping this lined up at the same spot on my sewing machine. Um, in fact, I will put my tape there. A lot of times I do tape where I want my lineup to be, and my lineup is going to be right here. That is roughly at the 3 8 inch line. Um, I might do it at half an inch. It's not truly critical where I do it at. As I come up here, do you see I've got my my seam open on both side edges. I've got my seam open. And as I come up here, I'm just going to kind of carefully come across there. I'm going to give that seam just one quick um, back stitch, just to give it a little bit of stability there, because I don't want that little part unpicking itself. As you're sewing along, keep in mind that. Your zipper has a metal part at the end, so you want to be careful as you come up to that that you don't hit that metal part. So you just need to sew through there kind of carefully. Oh, 
which I forgot to take out a pen. And as I come down here, I am then going to stop right at the edge. And I want you to keep in mind that my um, fleece wasn't completely even. Now that we have our scarf completely sewn all the way down, we are going to turn this right side out. And it's going to be pretty quick and easy to turn it out because I have a hole at the end. So we're just going to keep putting our hand in there and pulling out a little bit more at a time until we have the whole thing turned right side out. As you're turning it right side out, make sure you don't turn your pot. Make sure you get so you're all the way to the inside so your pocket doesn't get weird. If your pocket ends up feeling like it's wrong, then you just didn't get all the way to the inside. And you just need to return it back right wrong side out. Um, if you are worried about putting in a zipper, putting in this variety of zipper, then you don't have to put a zipper in. You can put a piece of Velcro or you could put a button, or you could just leave it, you could just leave it open. You don't have to put the zipper in. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut fringe right here on both sides. And to do fringe, I'm gonna do something similar to what I did um, before, in that I'm going to mark it. But I'm going to mark it, in this particular case, I put a piece of tape along my seam, and I'm gonna mark it at three quarters of an inch along my seam all the way across. That way, as I'm cutting it, I know I'm going to cut it pretty even, but I don't have to figure out, let's see, there's my three quarters of an inch mark. It very conveniently came out even. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut right along the fold up to the sewing line. I am not passing the sewing line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both sides and I am going to, do you see my mark right there? Do you see where my mark is? I'm going to line those shears up to that mark and I'm going to cut up to my sewing line. Not quite all the way up to my sewing line, but pretty close. Then I'm going to clip and I'm going to clip almost to my sewing line. And you need pretty sharp shears to go through all four layers. If you're having trouble going through all four layers with your shears, just go through two at a time. And then I have a cute fringe here at the bottom. And I'm going to take off my tape. And the same, I'm going to use the same tape on the other side. I'm not going to redo my measurements because tape is easily transferred from one place to another. So I'm going to put my same measurements here. I'm going to first cut this edge. If I want my fringes to be a little bit more accurate, I'm just going to mark kind of not all the way to the edge, but just kind of even with my marks. Just running my ruler along the edge of my along the edge of my seam and I'm marking at the end of my ruler just kind of lining stuff up just a little bit there. Now it's easy enough to line up to both of these. It's kind of like making a dot to dot. And I want you to observe also that I'm keeping my scissors directly on my cutting table. That gives me a little bit more leverage. And this last little and then I have some cute fringe here. Thank you for watching the stadium scarf by Share Our World.